Greetings YouTube, today I will be answering your questions because, well, I tried to gather footage. I'll fire a TV missile. There it is. I failed. Anyway, I sent out the call and got a surprising number of questions, so let's go through them. Starting off with a relatively serious one, uh, Tokani asks, what is the most difficult genre of games to dive into? Now that's kind of a tricky one, but uh... I mean, it depends on what sort of gamer you are. I mean, if you're a, like a, a complete beginner and you don't have any experience with anything, then it's unlikely that you're going to be good at, well, any of the games. Because you just aren't. Like, mouse movement and keyboard movement is not a common thing. I mean, anyone who's seen like a brand new player just put their hands on the keyboard and, you know, try and move around for the first time will know this. It's not easy. What we do is surprisingly difficult. It's not quite on par with, like, skateboarding or politics, but it's up there. That said, I think the most, like, difficult and horrific genre to get into by far is, like, the advanced strategy games. You know the sort, the World War II simulations, the Gettysburg simulations, just these massive hex grids of numbers and horror and misery where the turns take 10 hours and then you lose because you forgot to diplomize the daughter of the plantation owner of the wife's widow of the uncle's monkey fucker, whatever, just like, it's a horrific genre to try and get into for the first time. I mean, to be fair, space sims can be up there, but like, there's a difference between trying to, you know, figure out all of the keys that you have to press on a spaceship to get it to move in the correct direction, and like, just the sheer... Honestly, there are manuals this thick for some of these strategy games. Just, no, fuck them. Fuck them all. I mean, to be fair, if you're, like, experienced with the strategy stuff and you've been doing the board games for years, then... Well, probably more difficult if you to get into. And if you have no time, then it's almost impossible to get into like MMOs and stuff like that, so you know, it, it depends on the sort of person you are. But for me personally, it is those fucking strategy games. They can fuck off. Ah, here we are. Aha, and Brick Hardcastle asks, Why is your favourite anime Boko no Pico? Boko no Pico? Boko no Pico? You know, I'm going to have to Google that. Image search. Fuck you, Brick. Psychonaut asks, how big is Batista's dick? I'm not even sure who Batista is. But considering it's got Bat in the name, I'd imagine... Tiny. Fade, being Fade, has asked two questions. First of all, how many hogsheads are in a barrel? Six. Uh, and on a more serious question, what are your channel's goals? Well, that, that's an interesting one, actually, because I don't really know. Like, I have no idea what's reasonable to, you know, goal for. But uh, the first objective that I have, which is kind of like a goal, except it's a different word, is that I want to get to 100 subscribers so I can get rid of my terrible, terrible channel name. Because uh, while I am a YouTube partner, fuck knows how that happened, by the way, I unfortunately already use my custom URL to make my channel Richard Headley, because I thought it was funny at the time. And to be fair, this was like three or four years ago, so it kind of was. And in order to do that, I need to qualify for the new standards for a name change, which are 100 subscribers and a bunch of other shit I already meet. So, yeah. So, there's my objective. 100 subscribers. It always feels slightly wrong to break down, like, people into just numbers and figures to goals, honestly. I, I'm more interested in active and, you know, interesting people that can give me interesting comments and start interesting conversations, because I don't want to be watched by a bunch of mute fucklings. I want to be watched by people who can laugh and make me laugh. Because, to be honest, laughter is just... it's just the thing we need. The world needs more laughter. I mean, it's already got way too much love, those people, like, holding hands and being all lovey-dovey can fuck off, but laughter is important. Rippin' Mayhem asks, what made you want to record? And, uh, I'm, I'm not too sure to be honest, it's, it's just I've been doing this for years now, so, for as long as I can remember. Well, not quite as long as I can remember, because, you know, that would be impossible. But I have been, you know, trying to record for years, and I think, think, the catalyst for it was uh, some of the early Machinima stuff. You know, like, uh, obviously Red vs. Blue was kind of a, a big deal. Snoke and Entertainment, with uh, the Mind series and Frost series in particular, that just set a benchmark for me. After watching Clear Skies, you know, 1 and 2, because 3 hadn't come out yet, I just really, really wanted to get involved in this sort of recording side of things. 
then I discovered that people are bastards and that I can't rely on them for anything and trying to organise a, a massive machinima shoot is just impossible. Plus I didn't have the specs to record back then, but now, now I do. Eventually I'll probably go back to machinima because I just love the concept of it, but for right now, YouTube. XProLogic asks, uh, how long have you been gaming, what is your favourite game and why? That's three questions, you greedy, greedy fuck. But, since you are my friend, I shall answer. I have been gaming for as long as I can remember. That's not an exaggeration either, I grew up in the back of a game store. My parents owned a game store in Torquay that was called House of Fun, and I used to play all of the reject games that they couldn't sell, because they were stingy, stingy fucks. Which kind of played into my gaming habits right up until the release of Steam, because, you know, Steam sales made it possible for people like myself to play AAA games at some point. Because, you know, back then they'd, they'd rarely drop below 20 or 10 quid, unless they were in a different package. So yeah, I've been gaming for a very long time. I'm, I'm currently 24, because my birthday was yesterday. So, yeah, I, I've been gaming for... Yeah. Uh, what is my favourite game? Oh, fuck, that's hard. Um, to be honest, despite being a PC game, my favourite game probably isn't a PC game. It's uh, got to be one of the entries in the SSX series, because I always love that. It's like snowboarding, pointlessness stuff. Could be tricky, could be three. I mean, one was open world, one was awesome. It's hard to say for certain, but it would be one of the SSX games. Uh, as for why, um, I'm not really sure. Maybe, maybe they just represent exactly what a game should be to me. Like, this big spectacle of fun. Because, like, over the years, like, games have just become less fun, in a way. I mean, some games like League of Legends and Rocket League just kind of capture the fun and, you know, maintain it, but really fun is, like, taking a backseat to things like gameplay and challenge and story and just... Where's the fun? Not that I'm saying that gameplay, challenge and story are a bad thing. I mean, they're really good. It's just... I, I, sometimes I kind of wish that fun was still the priority, rather than, like, fancy graphics or telling a story or a narrative experience or immersiveness or... Let's just have something fun. Hermit asks, why are bananas yellow? It's so monkeys that are colorblind can see them. Okay, uh, I'm gonna call it there. This is likely to become like a weekly thing. So if you have any other questions or general comments or you want to call me a moron, then feel free to post in the comments and, well, I'll read them and respond. If you call me an idiot, I'll also call you an idiot because that is the way we are. Isn't it wonderful? That'll do me. Stay safe. And feel free to...